Hello, I'm doing a narrated video for this King Tiger drawing that I did a while back, as promised. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about this famous World War II tank and about the drawing process. So let's get to it. As for my materials, I mostly use charcoal. I mostly use charcoal pencils. But I also uh, use other types of pencils and uh, I normally use graphite for sketching, which is what, I, what I'm doing now. I decided to place my King Tiger in the middle of the scene and I decided to uh, create a relatively simple background with a row of trees in the back and a cloudy sky. If you've seen my some of my previous videos, uh, you may have seen my drawing of a Tiger Mark I tank. And in that drawing, I had a slightly more complex background uh, with a little bit more detail. And the sky was a little bit clearer. The lighting was different. Here I wanted a little bit less uh, contrast in the background and a little, little less detail. And I wanted a darker, cloudier, overcast sky with a softer lighting and a little bit less contrast. So now I'm going over these bushes and trees in the back with a tutelion and softening the texture. And when I work on my trees, I can either use a brush for blending or the tutelion, or sometimes even both, obviously. But when I mostly use tutelions, I tend to eliminate much of that texture. So this is what I wanted to achieve here because I wanted it to be a little more subdued and with less texture and less detail. I'm moving on to the, the middle and the right part of that background here, working around the outline of the tank. Uh, in order for the highlights on the tank to stand out more. So I'm going to try to use that contrast to make the tank pop out a little bit more. I started talking about my materials, like I said, in addition to the charcoal pencils, and I nowadays mostly use woodless charcoal pencils. I also sometimes use graphite pencils. But for some of the detail, I can also use uh, black colored pencils. And I even sometimes use vine charcoal. Here on the sky, which is what I'm working on now, I can either use charcoal powder uh, in a combination with my blending tools, or I can use a little bit of vine charcoal, which is what I'm doing now. I decided to shade the sky with vine charcoal because I knew that there wouldn't be much texture left because vine charcoal is very soft and it's very easily uh, spread around and blended and um, it's also pretty easily removed and since I want softer shading and softer transitions there uh, it's important for me not to have too much texture because these are clouds so you can see that I'm mostly working with vine charcoal and adding a little bit of the charcoal uh, dust and uh, darkening some of these areas with a brush and I used uh, two sizes of brushes here. I used a very large one here for blending and softening everything and a smaller one to refine some of the details. And I can also use my tutelion to go in between some of these clouds and break up that mass of clouds a little bit to give it structure and shape and uh, make more sense out of it. And uh, I have to keep in mind where my light, so light source is, so I, I'm shading the lower part of those clouds a little bit more, making them a little bit darker, and I'm going to be making the top part of those clouds lighter. I'm using a pencil eraser which which can be sharpened to draw some of the detail on the top parts of those clouds to make them stand out a little bit more and to make them look a little more wispy. That's why I'm working on their edges. 
So that's essentially how I achieved this uh, cloudy sky look. As for my reference, I didn't use a single reference photo, I just uh, decided to uh, come up with a cloudy sky and add some, add some um, trees in the back. And as for the reference that I used for the, uh, for the tank itself, I used a plastic model I found on Instagram. Um, there are people who make very nice and very detailed uh, models of scale models of uh, various kinds of vehicles, World War II tanks and planes and stuff like that. So, since I'm a little bit interested in that as well, I used one of those for my reference and made some slight changes to it and added this background and this is how I uh, how I constructed my scene so the King Tiger or the German Tiger 2 tank is a late war armored vehicle and even even though it's very famous it's a very famous tank and it's very popular among modelers it actually wasn't produced in great numbers and it didn't really so they didn't really see that much combat in reality because like i said it was introduced later in the war and uh, it was never really mass produced i believe that probably less than 500 were produced maybe a, a little bit more but probably around 500. The tank was huge and mechanically complex and um, very difficult for mass production and for maintenance. So that caused a lot of problems for Germans. Maybe they would have been better off mass producing a little bit smaller uh, medium tanks such as Panthers that were also uh, very powerful tanks with a good gun and decent armor, but uh, it probably wouldn't have made much of a difference anyway. In comparison to the Tiger I tank, the King Tiger had a number of improvements. First of all, it was a lot larger and had a stronger gun and thicker armor. But the armor itself was, I think, a lot better designed because it was sloped armor, both on its hull and the turret, as you can see. And the sloped armor has a number of advantages. Now let me interrupt myself just for a second. You can see that on the turret uh, there is a pattern of horizontal lines. Uh, that's the Zimmerit paste that was used as an additional protection against mines in the later stages of the war. So I tried to simulate the texture of, the, of that paste on my tank as well. And you can also see that I added some suggestions of a camel pattern on the turret as well, even though it's not very noticeable. I mean, this is a, this is a black and white drawing, so obviously I can't have colors, but uh, the King Tiger had a number of uh, a number of uh, camo schemes in the late war, so I just added a few uh, areas of a few, a few darker areas uh, on the turret here and there, just to make some suggestions of the camo pattern. But I'm not really going to work too much on it. Now I'm finishing the background here. Anyway, I started talking about the armor of the King Tiger. Uh, the advantage of the sloped armor was the fact that uh, it offered more armor to, for the shell to penetrate, depending on the angle, of course. And, of course, uh, the sloped armor increases the possibility of deflecting uh, the shell as well. And now I'm working on the wheels, and it had a double set of wheels. 
they were overlapping uh, which is one out of many complications with this vehicle so this was also very difficult to produce and for maintenance as well and like I said it had many advantages in comparison to the Tiger Mark 1 tank but uh, it was just very big and very difficult to mass produce so didn't really see that much usage I believe that these are some of the cables on the hull I believe that it was first used in Normandy in summer of 1944 and on the east on the eastern front it was used uh, later in 1944 in autumn I think or in late summer of 1944 the weird thing is that more of these tanks were actually abandoned by crews due to malfunction and other reasons uh, then were actually destroyed by the Allies. So actually uh, quite a number of them was captured and at least a dozen of them can be found in museums around the world. But when it did uh, engage in combat obviously it was a very formidable tank very difficult to destroy the Soviets captured a couple of these I'm working on the tracks now which were very wide and massive the Soviets kept uh, captured a couple of these uh, in when it was introduced or soon after it was introduced and Initially, they weren't particularly impressed because they've already seen uh, massive and powerful uh, German vehicles, and it wasn't that much of a shock for them. And they tested the King Tiger 88 millimeter gun and reached a conclusion that it was about of similar power to the uh, to the 122 millimeter gun that was used on the on on the R Russian or Soviet heavy tank uh, Joseph Stalin II So now I'm just refining some of the detail and shading a little bit around these tracks, uh, trying to make them look a little more 3D and trying to create an illusion of detail because as with some of my other previous uh, drawings of either planes or tanks, I am not very technical about them. I don't really care too much about precision. So. I'm just trying to create something that looks realistic but precision is not really what I'm going after and I never use any rulers or compasses or anything like that I just like to use freehand most of the time or whenever possible That's the gun mount there, that hole, I think, and there and there's another uh, machine gun mounted on the top of the turret. The mounted machine gun was probably MG34, uh, MG42, uh, and the one inside the hull was the MG34 probably. The mounted version of the gun was the older version of the machine gun. I don't know why but MG42 was mostly used either 
uh, by infantry or on top of vehicles, usually open vehicles. Tanks usually used the older machine gun as the integrated hull version. Uh, but that's neither here nor there now I'm working on the grass as usual um, I'm just gonna try to create some of these longer strokes longer blades of grass in the foreground and um, shorter and blurrier blades of grass in the background And I'm going to try to blend that as much as possible with a brush so that I can push the charcoal into the paper and um, keep some of that texture. And then I can just go over some parts with a tutillion and uh, soften it where needed. And after that I can just uh, use a pencil eraser to pull some of these lighter blades of grass. But it doesn't really need to be too detailed. Now here you can see that I used my vine charcoal to add a little bit of uh, foliage, uh, some bushes in front in the lower left corner and I did the same thing in the top right corner as well. I wanted to make the composition a little more interesting and to uh, to have uh, some things in the foreground to create an illusion of depth, maybe. And vine charcoal makes it very easy to draw foliage because it just it just makes it very easy to draw these leaves and branches. But you have to keep in mind that it's very soft and it can be easily smudged, so. Uh, you have to be careful until you fi uh, fix it with a spray, not to not to go over it or touch it with your hands. If you're wondering why I do drawings of World War II tanks and planes so often, it's because I'm kind of interested in the period. I played a lot of computer games with a World War II theme, mostly real-time strategies. Some of my favorite ones were Sudden Strike and Men of War, Men of War Assault Squad. Soldiers, Heroes of World War II, etc. I never played much of the Blitzkrieg series. I mostly played Sudden Strike and uh, Men of War. So I kind of learned a lot about World War II tanks and equipment along the way. And I think that uh, World War II was a great tragedy that uh, we can learn a lot from. But then again, so is every other war. You can see that I uh, modified those bushes to the left a little bit so that they are going over uh, the trees in the background. I, I just felt like this line of the trees in the back was kind of boring so I wanted to break it up a little bit by drawing these bushes in front. And I decided to add the Zimmerit here in, on the front plate as well. I'm really trying to use my pencils to produce a rough um, looking texture that kind of looks like steel but slightly worn out and dirty weathered steel. And even though I said that this entire scene will have a somewhat softer lighting I still need areas of high contrast because this thing is made of metal and has a lot of these sharp angles so I do need areas of high contrast on the tank itself
if I did this in graphite, I think the drawing would have been a little bit cleaner with some cleaner, nicer edges and more precision. But charcoal makes everything a lot faster. It's a lot faster to work with and it's very easy to get these dark uh, areas and to achieve high contrast and a great range of value. That's why I like charcoal. So even though this uh, drawing doesn't look super detailed and maybe not even technically uh, correct in every single detail, it looks very convincing because of because of these darker areas and because of contrast. And that's ultimately what I'm going for. I'm going for a, for an artistic impression rather than trying to create a precise technical drawing or something. As you can see I'm just shading a little bit trying to create some suggestions of a camel, camel pattern here very lightly. I removed the tape and sprayed it with a little bit of fixative and I'm just gonna sign it here in the lower right corner and that's it the drawing is finished I hope you found this narrated video entertaining bye for now